96.7 FM, WORX. Good morning, and thank you for tuning in. It is 9.05 a.m. up here on Telegraph Hill. A.J. Brammer here in studio. It's the last Tuesday in the month of July, and that means it's time once again for Cop Talk. Joining me for this month's program, we have, as always, Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor. So, Chief Taylor, as always, uh, thanks for coming on the program. Yep. Thank you guys for tuning in and inviting us out here. So, And, um, of course... Here we are at the end of the month of July, uh, getting ready for uh, the return to school. But first off, uh, what's new at the uh, Hanover Police Department? Oh, not much. Uh, we're winding down from the summer uh, with it, gearing up, getting ready to go back into school. Uh, we do have a vacancy out there as the school resource officer, but we have plans in place to provide officer uh, patrols and security there and assigning an individual in the building until we do uh, hire a replacement for that position out there. I know, you know for your department, for um, Mass and Police and for the Sheriff's Department, the school resource officer, um, obviously security is the main thing you think about with the SROs, but it really goes a lot deeper than just that. Yes, it does, because they're a bridge work between the Jefferson County ju uh, youth and the juveniles here. That way they can go and have an interaction with a law enforcement officer on a daily basis instead of just at a police call where they're a victim or they're a witness with this. They're able to talk to the officers on a daily basis, put a name with a face, and be able to just develop a relationship that way. And it goes a long way, you know. Like we talk about it all the time, you know, establishing those relationships. And, you know, kids need to know that police officers are there to help. They're not just guys that pop up when you get in trouble. Yeah. It really helps us out because you can see when it bleeds back out into the community, somebody's sitting there and they're willing to approach you instead of having that fear of law enforcement where a parent says, oh, if you're bad, we'll call the cops on you. At least then they know that they can still speak to us whether or not they're in trouble or, or if they're a victim. So, and I know I talk to uh, kids and families all the time that, you know, when they when they first see the, the school resource officer at the beginning of the year, it might be a little, it might be a little intimidating knowing the officers in the building, but by the end of the year, it's really cool to see the relationships grow. Oh, yeah, it really does make a positive difference. And so, obviously, as we uh, get into the school year, um, the most important thing we want for folks to know in the mornings is, you know, be safe. Yeah. Uh, with the time change we'll see later in the year, um, it's still daylight and when the kids are going outside to get ready for the buses. It'll definitely change as we get closer to the winter months. Uh, new law changed July 1 about passing school arm buses. It was the, when they have the stop arm extended, you can't go past and if you are found guilty of the violation, it could result in a suspension of your license. Previously, you could either receive a ticket that was just punishable by fine and no suspension, or the other one, if you did it in an extremely reckless manner, you could potentially uh, be arrested for it as a misdemeanor. The in-between line of middle compromise ground that they made this year in their legislative sessions was if you were found guilty, you would have a non-suspendable uh, punishment of losing your license uh, for a set determined amount of days. I don't remember the exact one, but I believe it was a couple months that you would lose your license uh, for going past a stop arm. And especially with the buses today, I know a good chunk of the buses have cameras on them now, so you're, it's one of those things, you're not going to get away with it. That's correct. A lot of them have good quality cameras on the systems that are coming at you and also as you pull away. So if one was malfunctioning or not working properly, two, one to two other cameras would be able to catch the picture of the driver. You're able to see who the driver is in most instances. You're also able to see the license plate as they go away. And uh, some states have a two plate, one on the front and one on the rear. And especially if it's uh, something like that, catch you coming and going. And I know it was um, discussed at the most recent Southwestern School Board meeting, um, another law that went on the books this year, uh, school buses, only are able to pick up kids on the right side of the road. Yes. And so that's another one. You know, that won't impact the drivers as much per se, but, you know, we definitely want um, the parents of the kids to make sure they're uh, telling these kids, hey, these are the rules now. Yes. Um, that goes and keeps the children from crossing lanes of traffic. Uh, one thing that'll make a difference if you're a parent that'll have a child out there waiting on a school bus, it will mean that the travel time is going to be extended. So if you feel that your child's been out there waiting a little bit longer, get with your bus driver, get with your school system, speak with them, find out exactly what they're anticipating, give them a 
few weeks to settle in. This is something new for them because now they're going to have to travel twice the amount of miles because they're going to go up the road, come back down the road, or redesign their routes to try and make it the most efficient to pick everybody up so the children aren't on the bus for an extended amount of time. If you're the first kid on or the last kid off, uh, it could make it wait longer so I know that at least Southwestern is reevaluating everything and trying to make it the most efficient process for it. Like I said, you know, it's one of those I know if you are if you're waiting for the school bus to come and you see it come across the street first, I know it's a little frustrating that you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, but ultimately this is about the safety of the children. Yeah. Uh, if you're a school bus rider and or a parent of a child, please talk with them and go and encourage them to wait. Tell them that they can't run across there because no officer ever wants to work a fatality wreck, let alone a fatality wreck involving children. This time of year, and I know really theft and other property damage, things like that, that's a topic that comes up pretty frequently. And porch pirates, I know when we get into a little closer into the, um, you know, the winter season when people are doing their holiday shopping that's another big topic uh, that comes up but it's one of those that you guys are answering those calls all the time <laughs> yes uh, with it we have crimes of opportunity happen all the time a lot of them where it's a property theft or it's not a crime against a person uh, somebody gets punched somebody gets robbed they're typically there they're a witness they're a victim they see what's happening and they provide us information for the crime that occurred. Uh, I know one as a, a lot of victims in our community or individuals who have been victimized by theft or burglary uh, where it's a non-witness crime they feel very frustrated with law enforcement or the court system or anybody in particular but a lot of times uh, we as law enforcement, my officers, uh, officers from other agencies they get the burden or the brunt of somebody that's upset because why aren't you doing something uh, we're trying to do everything that we can to investigate it. So we look at it from different angles, but if we don't have a direct lead to it, it makes it hard to investigate it. We reach out to the community and canvas it just with so many people now have ring doorbells or security systems. Uh, I encourage you uh, as a listener or a neighbor in our community, if you see something, say something about it. Second of all, if you do have security cameras and you know that a neighbor or somebody down the road has been victimized uh, by a theft or other items, please bring that to our attention because we may not know about it and if we never know about it we don't add, and know to ask and say hey AJ I understand that you have this camera outside can we look at it to see if we can help solve our crime a lot of businesses used to be the only places that have it now home security systems ring doorbells they're better cameras than what some people put in their businesses and those help us solve crimes we had some recent break-ins where we're able now to identify uh, the vehicle or a description of a vehicle gets us in the ballpark in the time where we're able to change up our patrol patterns or our investigations trying to see if an individual is out at that time uh, and just those security footage cameras have helped us out narrow down time frames for uh, different property crimes. I think that uh, it definitely plays into um, another topic that comes up on this show a lot you know folks out in the community are the police departments, the sheriff's departments, eyes and ears out there. Yes. I was going to say, you guys live there, you're there, you know what's normal, you don't know what's normal. Um, when you go to a different city, you go to a different town, you always ask somebody in the neighborhood or in the local, what's a good place to eat? Where's the best place to shop? Where should I avoid? Uh, who has the best uh, places, uh, boutiques to shop? Or you have your favorite place to go downtown Madison. You ask around, you ask somebody local, you look for their advice because they know their city. Same thing here. You, have, you know what's out of place and you're the ones that will go and help us determine what's normal and what's not normal. And I think it's uh, the officers are perfectly willing to make a phone call that leads nowhere, uh, but they'd much rather you know not miss the phone call that might actually be the tip that 
break yes. something open. Yeah, very much so. Um, by just shutting it down or uh, discounting it and everything, we miss an opportunity to close something out or prevent a crime. Law enforcement in itself is pretty much reactionary. We have to wait and be told, hey, something bad's happening or has happened. Rarely do we get that preemptive call of saying, hey, I know tomorrow at this time they're going to do something and we can intervene. Uh, typically, it's something's happened. Can you help us out? Right. And I think um, kind of playing off of that, something that I always appreciate to see, and it's another topic we talk about pretty frequently on this show, um, a lot of times you see in the press releases or the probable cause affidavits, you see different officers from different departments helping each other. And this is no, you know, these investigations a lot of time are no different. Yeah, seeing everybody working together. Everything bleeds across back and forth. Um, we have a transient society. Right now, where we're sitting at on top of Telegraph Hill, we could be in Kentucky in 15 minutes or less. Now we have two states where the suspect is fled to. What is it, an hour and 15 minutes to Cincinnati? We could be two, uh, two states away. We could be in Illinois in a matter of two and a half hours. So it just depends on that. We have to network, know each other, uh, speak, because a county line, a city line, a, towny line or a town line doesn't cut down on the crime. Nobody just stops there, oops, I can't go out of here where we're going to be in trouble. Uh, they already have broken the law. They've done something improper. They're going to do anything and everything. They're just not going to say, well, I'm out of bounds. i got to stop and wait until law enforcement gets me. Saying during the break, you know, obviously uh, we, we got through Regatta. We got through the 4-H fair. Um, those aren't necessarily... Those don't necessarily fall under your jurisdiction, but um, as we get into you know the the fall or the the summer festivals, you know we'll see Riverfest coming up in Madison. The Chautauqua's coming up as well. Um, definitely want people to still just go out and make good decisions. Yeah, I was going to say we made it through. There were several arrests, the investigations that uh, took place out at the county fair, also down at Madison Regatta. There were some issues in the city during those weekends and those times, but I mean the officers handled them accordingly took care made sure everybody was safe uh, with it we're bleeding in now going into the Chautauqua and you said the fine arts festivals that the town of our city of Madison and Jefferson County will host so just be ready for additional uh, tourists or people coming here to partake in the events uh, be patient and as always parking's at a premium downtown you know, and as we, we wrap up the program, I know that we kind of started the program talking about it, but I feel like we hit on it again, you know, school's getting ready to start literally just around the corner, and, um, you know, with the different laws in place, you know, concerning the buses, but just in general, um, we got to take care of the kids in our community, and yes, definitely want people to be on the lookout. Yeah. They're our future. Uh, parents, if you have items that you're going to send with your uh, children, whether it's they receive electronic devices from school, make sure that they're marked uh, with the serial number, you have those on hand. Uh, talk about internet safety with children. There's uh, a lot of crimes against children where people are soliciting them uh, through different social media apps. Be aware of what your children are using. Become familiar with the platform so you can go and keep your kids safe. Um, if you send any of your personal equipment, uh, electronics, toys, anything to school with your children, make sure they're identified in case they come up missing so it's easy for law enforcement or easier for law enforcement to recover it for people. And you know, as we come up on the end of the program, anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you for having us and tuning in today. Well, we definitely appreciate you coming on the program. And, of course, we appreciate you coming on the program on, of all days, your birthday. <laughs> so, Thank you, AJ. Yeah, happy birthday, and uh, cheers to many more. Thank you.